Hello everybody. So we're coming up to the full sturgeon moon, uh, which means, well, sturgeon, I guess it's the season for um, fishing sturgeon in the river. That's my guess why they call it that. It's based on the almanac. Um, it's a full moon in Aquarius happening August 3rd. So you might be starting to feel it already uh, and as usual full moons can be felt sometimes a few days before and after depending what it's triggering in your own life in your own chart um, you know full moons can continue their effects for months even in us if they stirred something or awakened something and um, when you have a full moon in Aquarius, that means the sun's in Leo and you're dealing with fixed signs. And so the, the strength of a fixed sign comes out and usually it gives you a very clear oppositional energy, right? Um, if you get two leadership signs, cardinal signs, they might be opposed, but it's like, okay, but how can we work together? How can we create something new? And if you get two mutable signs um, going off, then, it, then it's like, okay, well, we're opposed, but we're flexible. When you get two fixed signs, it's like, oh yeah? Oh yeah? <laughs> so that's in the air all the time when you have a full moon in a fixed sign. Now, if we add to that some other planets that are squaring off with them in fixed signs, uh, you're gonna see that the the feeling of this full moon for me overall is very dynamic and active um, it has a it last the the new moon had this sort of eh, kind of feeling to it and honestly it was um, this one the energy of it is much more action 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 oriented so action can mean anything uh, so we're gonna take a look with our cards and try to tap into the vibe of of the moon more of this full moon a little more detail and I'm gonna discuss the astrology chart of it after that and I will also give a card for every sign since you know it's just a rough year with COVID I want to try to give everyone a little extra a little extra something all right so there we go Whew. All right, so we're just going to start with three cards. So our first card for this uh, full moon is the Eight of Cups. Now, if you've been following my other videos, you'll know like the Eight of Cups is a complex kind of card. As you can see, it looks pretty depressing. It's usually a card of feeling isolated and down and alone and, you know, who cares and why bother and screw it kind of feeling. It's something where you just want to give up trying. Usually because you've been trying so hard. <laughs> usually because you cared so much. You know, it's not a card of I never cared in the first place. It's a card of I cared so much that I burnt myself out and now I'm completely defeated and down and and you know why bother like people suck I'm always misunderstood I'm always left out I'm always alone I'm things never work I never get paid enough ma 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 this kind of thing Saturn and Pisces can be a martyr feeling sorry for yourself feeling disconnected from everybody so the way to get out of that is to focus on what you are connected to and sometimes it might be the most basic thing, but if you go outside in nature, you'll very quickly see that you're not alone. Everything is interacting. And so are you, because you're there. So you need to increase your feeling of connection to everyone, or to the earth, or to something, um, other than feeling isolated. That will bring you out of this crappy, misunderstood, nasty feeling. And sometimes this card shows up when you do need to walk away because you've given all you had and now you've got nothing left. Um, so sometimes some of you will be going through that. Ah, this is good. The Wheel of Fortune on, on the tails of that is a good thing here. Tides are turning. The wheel is spinning. 
Look at all the purple and yellow and gold and blue. It's much more vibrant again. It's, as we said, this full moon is going to be active and alive and kicking decisions into gear. So it is time to like harness that lightning force that's coming from this upper grid. You know, if something feels like it's moving you in a direction, if something feels to you like you just got to bust out and go, if you need to make some bold decisions, it's good timing with this moon. All depends on how, but action is good. Okay, boy. Our next card is the moon, so you're you're going you're moving through some murky waters and some uh, maybe some difficult emotional dynamics with this full moon, uh, with situations you're in or people around or um, the moon is you know unconscious, built up emotional crap, you know um, it's pain, it's old wounds, it's secrets. It's uh, hidden, covert sneakiness. It's uh, cheating and affairs. It's uh, sometimes it's viruses, you know. Sometimes it's just it's things lurking in the shadow that you didn't look at, um, and that it's not pleasant to look at. So we're busting through um, some sort of wall here with this full moon, some sort of. BS we're busting through. You know, I'm not going to get political and global and, you know, talk about all that's going on in the news with the uh, coronavirus, but it does make sense on that level too. Maybe, maybe some kicking down the door to get answers, um, some truth about lots of things on that. And if it's on a personal level, well, and not related to anyone else but yourself, then you're, you're looking at busting down your own inner walls and bringing up your own inner secrets and shadow and wounds to look at. But the Wheel of Fortune is good. Like there's, there's definitely a willingness and some, some uh, energy to move, it, move through it. It's not stuck there, which is very important. Let's keep going. The next card is the Nine of Cups, so that's beautiful. It's a happy, joyful, flowing creative, harmonious card. So this is a hopeful omen for doing the work. Do that inner work or do that uh, tough discussion kind of work with uh, close people or move away and put your boundaries with others. Whatever it is you're feeling compelled you need to do, the bold move will work out well. It's going to bring in new connections and new new um a new flow this is a lovely card there's nothing nothing's you know this is jupiter in pisces completely opposite to the first card of saturn so it means that there's a 180 in your life if you do that inner work and you release something old and painful the the flow comes back the joy the connection to the world, the creative ideas, the intimacy, it flows back. No more isolation. So very good card of connection here. The next card here is the uh, Prince of Discs. So that's like a sort of a young earth sign kind of energy. Um, it's usually more of a lazy-ish kind of self-indulgent kind of card or guy. Um, someone who's like wants everything and doesn't want to work for it, wants it to come to him for nothing. Yeah. Um, somebody who indulges in their pleasures and their sensations, meaning could mean addictions, could mean, you know, eating too much, uh, indulging in, in comfort. Like, again, like think about sloth, <laughs> think about you know, lazy, laziness. And this is a full moon of action. So this is not compatible with this full moon. If this is you, or if this is someone around you, someone needs their ass kicked. Someone needs a fire lit under their butt. Someone needs to be held accountable. Someone needs to say to this guy, uh, if you want that fancy meal, you'll have to work for it and pay for it or learn how to cook it yourself. 
and not be on the backs of others. So look for that if you or other people you know are taking others for granted um, or expecting free rides. There's a rebalancing or a kicking in the ass coming. Well, <laughs> the justice card follows that, so whatever uh, whatever that ass kicking is about, it might be official. It might be something uh, where there's an agreement or something in writing or a, something legal in order for that to happen or that follows on the heels of it. So um, this could mean all range of scenarios, by the way. You know, so the judgment card is basically like making making a decision formal, and that's why sometimes it can mean legal documents, signing your name to something, um, a lease, you know, um, a license, a um, a marriage contract or a divorce, um, a restraining order. <laughs> Hopefully not, but you, you get my drift. Like it's not just a matter of oh, just go talk to everybody, you'll be fine. No, this is like put it in writing. If it's a work matter, again, it's like CC everybody with your email, copy, copy what's sent to you, keep track. You know, if it's stuff that you buy, major purchases, read the fine print, get it notarized. That's the kind of card. So that's very interesting on the heels of that guy. So. You might have some situation like that come up. Eight of Wands, that's very nice. Again, it's a card of action. It's Sagittarius, it's Mercury and Sag. Look how bouncy that looks. Uh, rainbows and colors and arrows shooting in all directions. This is usually a card of travel, but you know I'm certainly not going to stand here and predict everybody will be traveling when uh, we're seeing higher outbreaks. But... Um, there could be, you know, again, more feeling of optimism. Um, travel doesn't always have to mean taking an airplane. It can be staycation, going for a drive. It can mean getting more exercise and going outside. It can just mean changing your surroundings even when they're nearby. And sometimes it can mean uh, inner travel because Mercury and Sag is somebody that's constantly learning, um, constantly reading, constantly learning about new, new, new places, new people foreign cultures, foreign languages. So that might, that's a very nice focus. You know, um, think about ways that you can expand your activity and your education. And uh, communicating, uh, you know, Mercury and Sag is very blunt. They're funny and they're truthful and to the point, but they spit it out very bluntly and sometimes without a lot of tact, but a lot of the time it'll be true. So you might come up against that as well. Oh boy, what's going on with this moon? There's a lot of activity with people uh, this full moon. There's a, if I get this feeling of like a, a, a gateway or a revolving door um, where there's lots of people around to deal with, where like there's one thing and then there's another and then you th it's peaceful over here and it's happier and then where'd you come from and now I've got to deal with you. Um, that's the feeling this moon is giving me. There's lots of activity. Everyone's moving. Everyone's saying things. Everyone's going off their own way. People uh, want to have their freedom and their will. There's other people trying to, you know, interfere. There's people changing their minds. It's like if you look at a big chessboard, it's like all of the pieces are in motion. So. In the midst of all of that, we have another character you want to be a little careful of. The Prince of Discs, you know, the lazy kind of guy taken for granted, he's easy to see. He's easy to spot, he's easy to deal with. He's a pain in the butt sometimes, but he's pretty easy to deal with. Uh, this guy, Prince of Swords, is not so easy to deal with. He's more, he can be very clever with his words. He can sell, you know, as they say, uh, he can sell ice to a to an Eskimo kind of deal. Maybe that's not very nice to say. Sorry, <laughs> but that's the old phrase. He can he can sell you anything. He can uh, tempt you. He can seduce you. He's not stable. He's not able to commit. He's not able to. Um, he's usually lying, to be honest with you. 
but he will put it in such a beautiful, clever package that you'll want to buy. You'll want to believe it. And uh, with our planets, we do have an aspect of Mercury and Venus uh, squaring off, and Neptune in there. It's not a great time for counting on clear communication. It's really not a great moon for dating uh, or for buying and selling stuff with for any red flag you get. Um, that it's too good to be true, it is. So you just want to guard against this guy. And finally, our last card, very good. Four of Wands, completion, Venus and Aries. Things are protected. Things are in good order and restored. So right now I would say there's that revolving door again, that circle. This is what this moon's going to feel like, a big circle, and there's a bunch of people around it, and there's a fire, and everything's moving, and everyone's talking, and everything's changing. And in the middle of that, you just keep, keep the circle content, keep your circle closed and contained, keep yourself centered. Venus and Aries is very good at, you know, um, taking action. But also thinking of your own of your self-interest so as long as you sort of keep your um, keep your eye open for anything that seems seductive or too good to be true something that is trying to rush you into a decision or buy buy something or just anything that feels a little like what's your big hurry or how come you're not pulling your weight or like really like is this per is this guy for real is this is this woman really telling me showing me your true colors you know any kind of doubt just wait just wait it out like I said the whole chessboard is moving right now um, everything's gonna going to resettle itself over the next month especially before we go into September when um, they're gonna start to try to bring all the kids back to school and they're gonna try to get everybody back to work um, in the middle of um, this pandemic we we don't know how this is going to go, but August promises you to be a pretty crazy month. There's going to be a lot of scrambling around, trying to trying to bring things back to uh, as much of a normal as we can, and we really don't know yet whether that's going to work. And so everybody's lives are going to be a little bit jittery, and there's a lot of changes. And as I, as I said, just be a little cautious of some of the people we mentioned. No big red flags, but... And with this justice card or legal card, you know, if somebody... It's not going to apply to everybody, but if, if something does seem that it warrants an official decision from you um, or an official response or reaction, then do it. Because there's a lot of positive cards here, too. You know, the the feeling I get is that you're, you know, if you're you're sort of pushing through a wall of smoke, you know, if you saw this billowing smoke coming at you, you'd be like, oh my God, what am I doing? And somebody, you know, you could feel defeated and feel like, oh God, here we go again. There's another wall of smoke. Can't tell what's going on. Um, but if you're willing to just okay it'll pass let's clear it and see what's behind the smoke and uh, keep going keep taking action keep being bold for yourself and don't let people come and bother you or interfere or, or invade your space or whatever just keep doing your thing you will get through the smoke to something much nicer so but there is a bit of work to this moon you know to this energy there's a bit of work to get through this smoke okay Whew, that just came like a lightning <clears throat> all right so we're gonna do the we're gonna do the astrology of it now so if you take a look at the chart the side uh, if you take a look at the chart that I am posting right here just Take a look at it for a second and I'll post it again at the end.
So of course, as we mentioned, you know, moon is opposite sun, which is every full moon, the moon is opposite the sun. Already that makes for oppositional energy, contradictions, standoffs, uh, strong opinions, um, game-changing moments, things that actually there's a decision around. Um, and in fixed signs, so again, strong and stubborn, two sides holding the holding their holding their own without budging. Now the sun is also squaring and moon are also squaring Uranus. That's one of the major energies of this full moon. So sun, moon, opposite, and then meow coming in there, sort of bust this in half, Uranus, and it's Uranus, it's not Venus. So Uranus is the disruptor, the, the rebel, the eccentric. So Uranus is going to shake things up and make you want to rebel. When you have fixed energy that includes Uranus, people want to rebel. They want to say, oh yeah, screw you. Oh yeah, I'll show you. So again, you might feel that I would say because there's planets that support the fire energy, Sun, Trine, Mars, and Chiron, which is a good aspect, you want to focus on the side that just take, take action and try not to fight. I know, it's not always easy. But instead of going, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, just say, you know what, that's the situation, I'm going to do this, and just go do it, and skip the confrontation if you can. Because we also have shitty, excuse my language, <laughs> we also have pretty crappy planets for communication in this full moon. We have Mercury opposite Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. A little Mercury in Cancer that wants to communicate all gentle and soft and nice and show empathy is met with like Darth Vader energy. <sighs> Three planets in Capricorn opposing it. You're not going to get through to people right now by being soft and nice. Some people will, but you have to be extremely good at it, extremely artful. But you won't get through right now with emotion, which is another reason I'd say try not to have the confrontation. Uh, Mercury is also squaring Mars in Aries, so yikes, again, you know, trying to be all Cancerian and, oh, I'm sorry, and how do you feel about that? I'll tell you how I feel. <laughs> Stop asking me. Or this Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter. What do you mean, feelings? Yeah, Mercury is getting a bit crushed right now. So not the easiest time to communicate. And if you do, be a little more poker face, practical about it, not emotional, okay? Mercury is trying Neptune, so that's one good, good thing. But Neptune, Neptune's not helpful with this. You know, uh, Mercury trying Neptune can also mean like seductive energy and very good, very good at manipulating with their feelings, but not so great to be clear, um, good for tapping into anything spiritual or intuitive though. Awesome for that. So try to pull back and use your intuition very strongly right now before you, um, get into any kind of conflict if it's not necessary. And again, this seductive vibe I mentioned before comes up again. Venus is conjunct the North node in Gemini still, and Venus is square Neptune. Uh, so a Gemini Venus squaring Neptune in Pisces, yeah, you know, beautifully seductive. And they could sell you anything. They could tell you anything and you'll be like, oh, please, God, tell me more. It's so perfect, but it won't be real. So I would say careful of any seductive energy, careful of pretty words, promises, um, careful to see people's true intention or their true self. They're, they're going to be very good at hiding it for now. I'll wait until this full moon passes. And the other great 
side uh, that emphasizes the fire and the action is that that same Jupiter uh, that's opposing Mercury and that same Uranus that's challenging the Sun and the Moon are, are meeting each other very nicely in Capricorn so Jupiter trying Uranus and Capricorn break free be ambitious Pfft, don't tell anybody just go do it that's my biggest message this month this uh, full moon don't tell anybody don't get into a, a conflict be very formal very clean cool if you have to at all otherwise don't just pull back trust your intuition deal with your feelings on your own and just do what you need to do that's to me the best way to use this full moon energy all right, stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to pull a one card for each of your signs. Hi there, so we're gonna continue with pulling one card for each sign just to give you a little extra full moon guidance so here we go now this one card is just your advice for the full moon period right so August 3rd is the full moon so we're talking about what's your advice in and around those few days before and after based on whatever's the strongest thing going on in your life right now okay so you can focus in if you want on a question you can focus you can leave it general or you can focus on what's the what's the answer I need related to a certain situation if you like all right so here we go first I think uh, I'm just gonna burn a little bit of sage for us and just really make sure that I have shed any energy from the other reading of the astrology. There you go. <sighs> All right, so pulling a card for Aries. Aries, your advice for this full moon is the Eon or the Judgment card. So this card is all about taking a stand, taking a definitive step or a decision. And it's not about being judged by others, but it does include a feeling that, you know, you're maybe overcoming a fear of being judged by others for whatever you decide to do or sometimes this is as simple as saying something um, out loud that you wouldn't normally say but it's there's a bit of a personal risk always with this card because you're coming out of the closet in some way and saying hey this is what I'm doing this is what I believe this is who I am this is what I think this is where I stand and so, yeah, whenever you do that, people align with you and people uh, are opposed. That's just the nature of the universe. And we try not to take it personally um, and just allow yourself to go forward and live in a higher alignment to yourself by stepping out and saying or doing what you need to do. All right. Taurus. Well... That's nice to get the happy card. Happiness. <laughs> Taurus, the nine of cups. So happy home, good food, good friends, connect to people, sleeping in. I don't know, whatever it is that means happy and comfortable for you. And a lot of, you know, creative output. Um, some of you might want to spend this full moon uh, it, you know, if you're a writer, if you play music, if you draw, if you, uh, if you bake, it might be a really lovely full moon to just 
take the time out and uh, do something that you enjoy for creative expression. Otherwise, it's a good mo it's a good time for uh, connecting with loved ones. So, it's it's a really nice one actually, and you wouldn't think that because um, Leo and Aquarius are excuse me are opposing Taurus, but you seem to me Taurus to be in a good state good state of mind right now. So that's lovely. All right, Gemini, your card is the High Priestess. So, you know, you've got Venus and the North Node in your sign. And you've got um, Neptune squaring off with you. You really have to just spend this full moon trusting your gut. High Priestess is all about being receptive and intuitive going with your dreams, higher perception, spiritual awareness, experiences that could be transcendent for you. Um, focus on that and rise above, you stay above any of the conflictual energy. Um, you may be in a period where you feel like you want more time to yourself. You know, Gemini's always flip-flop between highly social and you know, needing solitude. I would say this uh, this energy is more of a solitude full moon for you. And uh, this could be a great time for meditation um, or listening to anything that increase, reading anything that increases your spiritual side. And just trust whatever intuitive feelings you get. Yeah, so that's a nice message for you, Gemini. All right, Cancer. All right, interesting. So even though you're a Cancer, you're getting the Princess of Wands, which is fire. And even though you're a water sign, usually cautious, careful, introverted, private, the Princess of Wands is not. This is the time to be spontaneous, active, take a risk. Uh, definitely she's you know the flames are all around her so she is expressing herself so cancer you might find the full moon brings up a lot of um, emotion and you might feel like just the itch to move to you might feel like you just got to get up and run you got to get up and dance you've got to clean the whole house I don't know something physically needs to come out um, and also you might find that you feel more your sassy kind of self where you are maybe more assertive so that's interesting too for this full moon um, focusing on the physical action on the spontaneous action side of it all right Leo okay Leo your card is not so easy a seven of cups you want to be careful of uh, debts. You want to be careful of anything with uh, that seductive side I mentioned in the planets. Um, this card is usually pretty toxic, as you can see. So, toxic emotions. Um, this can be anything. Again, it, it looks like an illness, but it can also be addiction. And uh, it can be... Um, sexual indiscretion, cheating, stuff like that. It can be um, emotional abuse, stuff like that. It doesn't mean uh, that you are, you know, but you might want to just guard against anything that around you that comes up um, from other people or even you might even just not want to bother watching certain movies or TV or the news if it's triggering it for you. Um, so the message here would be to really, um, take a look at some of the, the deeper toxic emotional aspects that could be going on, um, if you're having difficulty with certain part of your life. This one requires some more inner, some more th reflection to really get clear what it is. But it's Venus and Scorpio. It's, it's all about desires that have gone too far and what that creates and it's also Venus and Scorpio on a good side 
could be digging deep, deeply, deeply, deeply into your emotions and deeper into the truth of things, yourself and others, to the side that we don't usually want to look at, but it's very important to see it if you want to heal it. Yeah, so that's your full moon. And of course, that does make sense when the full moon hits you and um, Aquarius at the same time in Taurus. It's going to provoke and stir you. So, yeah. All right, let's take a look for you now, Virgo. Virgo, you've got the Ten of Cups, so you might want to feel, um, feel out if you're taking on too much. If you're working too much, you're taking on too many things at once. This, as you can see, it almost looks like a head with a neck and the top looks like a, f a cloud over the brain. So you <laughs> this is my sort of burnout, brain fog, spaced out, you know, too much going on kind of card. The card can usually indicate overwhelm. Um, classically, this card is usually the happiness card in other decks, but for this deck, it's the nine. And then the 10 is where it says satiety. Basically that means, you know, if you're satiated, you have all you can do, you have all you can take, you have all that you need. There's no more room for anything else. And so just, just be careful that you're not feeling overwhelmed or burnt out. And if you are uh, recognizing those signs, if you feel depressed, if you feel tired, if you're insomniac, I don't know if you're not eating well, if you know your signs, uh, your own physical and emotional signals that you're overwhelmed, then um, let go of something and let yourself rest and take some time out. Libra. Libra. Very nice. Your card is the magician. So this magician is, um, there's three magicians in this deck. And this one is more, uh, as you can see, the magician is dominating the monkey below, kneeling on his head. Now this monkey um, is there to sort of tempt and taunt and, and mock the magician and make sure that he knows that his ego is, is in check. You know, he's sort of a trickster to sort of throw a loop in the magician's plans because otherwise the magician can do whatever he wants. He's got all the tools and people and everything at his disposal. He's got all the talents he needs. And the, the monkey comes along and it's like, ha, 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 did you think of that? Ha, ha. And this time the, 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 the magician is kneeling on his head. So it's like he has him under control. This could be a message that, you know, there's people around who are dominating others. Doesn't mean it. Okay, so sometimes people need to be kept in check. Other times the domination is forceful and it's not, it's not in balance. So you have to take a look at that dynamic um, around you and see, you know, is somebody using control or force appropriately or is it over the top? Because otherwise, the magician suggests, you know, plans and designs and projects and everything is going through. All right, Scorpio. Huh. Picking the Scorpio card. Scorpio, you get the death card. So, which also makes sense when you've got Uranus squaring off with Leo and Aquarius. The other fixed sign is you, Scorpio. So this means a lot of action and motion, transformation, death and rebirth, sudden surprises, sudden things ending, sudden things coming in their place. Um, you might feel this full moon the most intensely. Something is really changing for good with the death card. And it's usually leads you to something better than you expected. So don't fear the death card, but something does unravel or fall apart that you didn't expect first. And then it makes room for something to come in its place that's better. 
so yeah, Scorpio, you might be having a, an intense full moon, <laughs> but don't fear it. Sagittarius, you have the Eight of Swords. You are analyzing everything too much. You're thinking things through to death, okay? Jupiter and Gemini. Gemini is already doing 10 things at once. Jupiter expands that to make it even more. Thus, you get all of these swords crisscrossing each other, and you get this purplish, reddish, sort of painful looking vibe from the card. It's because by the time you get to the Eight of Swords, somebody's in their head so much that. You can't solve a problem by being in your head 24-7. You can't solve something strictly by thinking it and analyzing it. You have to feel it out also with your heart. You have to feel it with your body. You have to take steps and, and see what happens. You can't control it all from your head. So Sag just guard against that this full moon if you are in analysis paralysis mode just take a break stop it stop thinking about it don't decide not yet Capricorn so Capricorn you get the other magician this is cool we're getting two of them on this so you can see the differences you see how different that one is still the magician Everything is there at the magician's fingertips, and in this case, this magician almost looks like he has multiple arms like an octopus. So, this means you're ready to do a million things at once, like usual, Cap. This also is a good sign that you're flowing with it intuitively and harmoniously, and you're employing your feminine side this is a much more fluid magician that trusts their intuition and is creative and is, is flexible versus like, this is the plan. No, this is more like, that would be cool. This would be cool. I wonder how that's going to work out. Oh, look, they can help me. And it all sort of flows and a lot gets done. And I think you're going to really love this full moon because of that. It's very act action oriented. So let yourself, uh, you know, start those projects <laughs> Aquarius Aquarius you have the king of wands this is all about strong-willed men or strong-willed women taking charge fiery horse nothing can stop you so it's either you or it's someone around you who's just larger than life person, strong willed, dynamic, charming, uh, like a freight train. Now this could be good or bad, right? This could be somebody who's like amazingly kind and generous and uses it to help other people and always gets things done and, uh, inspires people. Or this could be somebody who's all about them and all about their ego and uh, narcissistic and uh, full of themselves. So think about who this is, the most dynamic, charming, strong person around you. And maybe you're taking a look at which it is here. And chances are a lot of people have both in them. You know, we all have dark and light. So maybe it's a message about getting clear, getting clearer on who somebody is around you. And usually this is a message for your own will. So it's time for you to connect with your own strong will. Uh, you know, the full moon, like I said, is all about action and the chessboard pieces are moving everywhere for everyone. It's a good time to get creative and push forward with something that you might not normally because there's opportunity when there's room and when things are, when the structure is being challenged, when old structures and things are being dissolved and old ways, there's room for the new. So you have to just harness your own will and creativity and push forward. And finally, Pisces. 
Pisces, your card is the devil. So remember what we said about seduction. Uh, we have Venus in Gemini squaring Neptune in Pisces. So those planets will hit you, Pisces, a little bit more because it's there's Neptune there. You've probably been dealing with this off and on for a long time. Um, so it might not be a shock, but again, the devil card is like, just make sure you see through somebody's intentions. Um, be careful of manipulation. Anybody controlling, anybody seems too good to be true. Getting any kind of addiction behavior in check. Um, anything, you know, imbalanced when it comes to food, drink, drugs, sex. Just be honest about that in yourself and others. Um, I get a feeling that you might have already met who this is, um, unless this is the, you know, you're dealing with it in yourself. But it's sort of time to uh, to detox your life of these people. And if it's you, you might need to detox your body a bit. Um, it doesn't feel really bad or scary to me. It just feels like a warrant, like a be careful. Like a take care of yourself, clean things up, clean, clean things up, clean up your life, clean up your body. All right. If you would like a longer reading from me, a uh, personal reading, you can reach me at river-rain.com or you can reach me below this video or clairvoyant medium, Catherine Allen on Facebook or Instagram. All right. And I'm available online only and uh, we can record the, re the readings with Zoom if need be. And I wish you all the best in this full sturgeon moon.